About two weeks ago, RJ Barrett said he would like to dunk on Kristaps Porzingis in one of those Bleacher Report Ask Me Anything forums. Yesterday, Porzingis responded to that statement. Take a listen. So you want to dunk on me? That's fine. You know, I'm, I'm a shot blocker. I don't know what you know some people are saying. I'm, I'm one of the uh, best shot blockers in the league, and, and you know I'm always up for the challenge. Um, you know, I think I think that's a that's a pretty goal, good goal for him to try to dunk on me. So. <laughs> That would be cool. I respect that. I, I love how humble he is. That's my favorite part about it. Is him. that humble? Th there's sarcasm. Is that sarcasm? It's, 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 I don't listen to him when he talks. Krista? Richard. Richard. <laughs> I don't. Do you like him turning it around on Archie like that? I, I, that was so, good. It's that a was, nice move. It's nice I thought that was kind of yeah, good, good, right? Yeah. Um, you know, look, obviously... RJ comes in, he's trying to make Knicks fans feel good about not only who they have, but who they don't have anymore. And this is going to be one of the big questions, right, answered in this season, is will the Knicks end up regretting this trade? I, I don't think so. I think, here's the thing, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, I want to have cap space to go after free agents in 2019, and then when it doesn't work, say, oh, I, I want to go back in time and, and not never trade that guy. Once you have a process... Not to use the cliche trust the process, but you have to, if you're a process oriented team, you have to trust in it. You have to go with that, even though the, the results may not be guaranteed in your favor. And so I look at that trade and they cleared the cap space. They got rid of a lot of toxic money, but more importantly, you got two first round picks out of the deal. And you also got a player that you're very excited about in Dennis Smith Jr. And so, yes, you risk not getting a player better than Porzingis in the offseason, and that's what happened. But they're in a place now of flexibility and assets where they can go after other types of players. Because remember, it's not just Porzingis, but it's Porzingis' medical issues and also off the, off the court. court issues. Those are things that were involved. Well, and in. you want people that want to be there. Yeah. And if he didn't want to be there, like if the Knicks are ever going to get to that place of, of just being a normal franchise, <laughs> they're going to have to have players that want to be there. They're going to have to develop from within. They're going to have to develop through the draft. And they're going to have to collect assets. Now, when you collect assets, then you can maybe trade for a high-level piece at some point in time. But to, to sign Porzingis and to say, like, oh, we want him here and he doesn't want to be there, that's just kind of, you know, continuing that same machine that they've had for the last like 15 years that hasn't really generated a lot of success. I mean, look, I just don't think we know yet. I don't think you can sit here today and say yes it was or no it wasn't because we don't know what Chris Stapps is going to be, right? Is his injury is going to catch up with him and it's going to turn into the next couple of years being like, oh, he almost made it right. back on the court. It didn't happen. Is he going to be fantastic? And we don't know what the Knicks are going to do. I have to be a little careful when you talk about the trading for cap space. Not every team should trade an actual star for cap space sure. unless they really think it's going to pay off. They could have still had one open max slot even with KP on the team. They wanted to have two. And the, quote, toxic contracts that you're talking about, who signed those toxic contracts? No, I, absolutely. So I just, they I they, they brought it upon themselves. But I, I think when you talk about Porzingis is A, we don't know if he's a, a real star mm -hmm. yet. He a burgeoning, perhaps. Two, the injury history. Mm -hmm. Three, the off-the-court issues. And then on top of that, you just didn't get cap relief. You got Dennis Smith and you got two first-round picks. So I, I think that if you are about we're going to do things the right way and sometimes we'll get the results we like and sometimes we don't, then you have to live with the times that you don't. I remember when Dallas uh, won the championship, mm -hmm. and then they decided they didn't want to give Tyson Chandler a big deal. They didn't want to pay, like, lock into a very old team mm -hmm. because they wanted the flexibility to go after Dwight Howard, I believe, the next offseason. Mm -hmm. Dwight Howard didn't sign, but I'm like, Dallas knew what they were doing. This wasn't a surprise to them. So I, I supported it. I thought that was the right move to do because otherwise you're going to lock in to a team that wasn't going to be good enough for a while. I, I'm just not buying the, quote, potential on either side. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see what KP does. I want to see what they do with his potential space and picks and all of this stuff. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.